Hi, I'm Jeff Holton, the Executive Director at Anchor House out here in Seaport Manatee in Palmetto, Florida. Today I'd like to share with you a devotional found in the book of Jonah. Jonah is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. This short account is packed with many life lessons. See, the overall theme of the book of Jonah is about the struggles people have in giving up their own desire and accepting God's plan and purposes for their lives. We can relate to Jonah in many ways as the story points out our struggles when our hopes, dreams, and desires conflict with God because we may not always like what God is doing. And the problem arises when our conflict with God is about His will versus our will. Jonah can easily represent humanity and our struggles with God. And maybe this is why I like the book of Jonah so much. Jonah was a prophet chosen by God to do something that he really didn't want to do. And in his hard-heartedness, he refused to do what God had told him to do. Now, we can be critical of Jonah because of his stubbornness. But let's be honest. How do we respond when God's plans don't coincide with our plans? From what we gather, Jonah had a pretty uneventful life as a prophet. Aside from his story, he is mentioned only one other time in the Bible, and that's found in 2 Kings 14, 23 through 29. And his one claim to fame is that he was a prophet who allegedly told the king of Judah a prophecy which helped restore its boundaries with Israel. And that's it. Since we don't hear much about Jonah, it's safe to say that he had a pretty good life compared to other Old Testament prophets. More than likely, he had built a comfortable life for himself. Thus, really, he had no intentions of leaving the comforts of his life and his homeland and endangering it by traveling to a faraway place and giving a message of repentance to the evil city of Nineveh. But you see, God was about to change this. In the opening verse of Jonah, God commands Jonah to do something, to get up and go to Nineveh, to warn the city of impending judgment. This was a problem for Jonah because God called him to get up and do something other than keeping the status quo. He was called to action. You see, God says, Jonah, get up and go. He didn't say, why don't you write a letter to the people or send someone else to warn them? No, he said, you go, Jonah. Jonah's response was surprising and yet in some ways not really out of the ordinary. Now, let's pause for a second and ask, why did Jonah refuse to go to Nineveh? What was so bad about this city? Jonah has been called the reluctant prophet throughout history and for good reason. So why was he so reluctant to go to Nineveh? Well, a little background about Nineveh. We see that Nineveh was notorious for being a violent city. It was the capital of Assyria during the height of its empire. The king boasted of their terrible reputation, and he ensured everyone knew that they would not be messed with. There are records of incidents, of live dismemberments, of having parades of heads on stakes with the friends of the deceased carrying them around. They were known to stretch live prisoners with, with ropes and have them skimmed alive. They were known to pull out tongues and other appendages. There are even accounts that they burned children alive as sacrifices. And those more fortunate who were kept alive were deported to various cities and sold for slave labor. So we can see why Jonah is a bit apprehensive. See, God calls Jonah to get up from his comfortable bubble and go to a place of danger. Now, what do I mean by a bubble? I consider the bubble a place of protection, security, and disconnect from anything dangerous or uncomfortable. It's ultimately a place of safety. It's a shield from the outside world and where people live in comfort and really don't have anything inter to interfere with them or to mess with their lives. It is the place where Jonah and many of us live today. Bubbles are beautiful places because to live in a bubble means that you are safe, you are comfortable. And we as Christians are good at building bubbles and living in these bubbles. We have created our own safe spaces, so to speak. We have safe radio stations, safe television shows, safe music, 
safe books, safe coffee shops, and the list goes on. And many of us can live in our bubbles without ever really having to leave the comfort of our bubbles. We love bubbles so much that sometimes we convince ourselves that God would never ever call us outside of them because frankly, it's too dangerous and God would never want us to go anyplace dangerous because he of course wants us to be safe and comfortable, right? This is what I think Jonah believed. Then God shows up with a special request to go to this place of danger. And Jonah was determined to not go to this violent city. He didn't want to ruin his reputation with the people of Israel by reaching out to this horrible city. So Jonah did what many of us do. He hightailed it as far away as he could to a place called Tarshish. This was an outright act of rebellion. And we're going to talk a little bit about this more in the next video. So before I conclude, there's just some questions or some considerations that I would like you to think about today. The question for you is, are you living in a bubble? If so, is there anything keeping you from going outside of the safety of your bubble? And lastly, if God were to call you out of your safety comfort zone called the bubble, are you willing to be obedient and to go when he calls? Something for you to consider. I pray that you have a great day and may God bless. The Lord, your ways are higher than mine could ever reach, but